Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before diesel. A little bit more small block four-cylinder diesel engine information. Look, it doesn't really matter whether it's, you know, a four or five-cylinder, a small diesel, you know. Just remember, that, that is the size of the unit that is supposed to be making the power to move the vehicle along. So you've got a pretty large vehicle usually, the, the Prados, you know. Standard, they're not too bad, but... Of course, the extra gear goes on in the trailers, but just think about that, that, you know, the engine is very small. It's just a four-cylinder. That's what I'm trying to point out, you know. That's how small it is. You're looking at it, right? So, look, let's go ahead and lift the head off it. Let's go ahead and lift the head off it. So you can have a look at the size of the cylinders, okay? So, look, I'll get a light. No, I won't get a light. Look, I'll just tell you. I mean, look, who, who knows how an engine works? If you don't know how an engine works, well, let's just go. This is not a full explanation of the combustion engine, but for people that don't get it, because, hey, guess what? You're not mechanics. You're not diesel fitters or diesel mechanics or diesel technicians or vehicle technicians or anything like it, right? So you probably shouldn't know how an engine works. So here we go. So these things here. There are your cylinders, right? Those round things. And in there is a piston. And you're looking at the top of the piston. There, the other one's down approximately, I'd say, you know. Look, I should know the bore and all that. I don't rebuild engines, you know. It's probably about 90, not 90 mil, you know. We'll just call it four inches, right? So the piston goes up and down four inches. So what does that do? So what we've got here is essentially is some air and then some fuel getting sprayed in. In this case, diesel fuel. And... Through the heat of combustion, that ignites in it, creates a little explosion, bang, forcing that piston back down. See the piston's here, so the head's on, so that's sealed and boof. So that piston goes racing back down, and there's rods that are connected to the crankshaft at the bottom, and that's basically what turns. So the crankshaft turns, bang, explosions constantly going on, up, down, up, down. So that's what's turning your engine. Pretty simple stuff, isn't it? You probably don't fully get it, and fair enough, don't. You know, don't be hard on yourself because you're going, I don't know what he's talking about because you know what? A lot of people don't, right? They'll pretend they do, but a lot of people don't. To a lot of people, it's simple stuff. They're going, what are you telling us this for? Again, we've got a whole wide audience here, a lot of different people. So we just wanted to cover that. And then obviously your crankshaft is what's turning and that's connected to the transmission or so on down the line. So, and obviously you lose a lot of power through your drive line, etc. So you need quite a lot of big explosions going on to keep that engine turning. To push all that weight, we're talking, you know, three, four, five, six ton, up to six ton in some circumstances. I mean, the car's three ton loaded, and then you've got the, you know, you've got the tow capacity. So five or six ton, people overloaded, right? So even if it's a bit less, really want to be clear, that little engine, that thing there is what is trying to propel that big vehicle along. And the faster you go, the more wind resistance you have. Of course, that's why you use more fuel for a bigger explosion. And at the end of the day, you know, something's got to give. I sort of explained this in another video that, you know, the engines, they're awesome quality. They don't wear like they used to. Old engines used to wear, you know, bore. So, you know, this, this would wear in here. That's the bore. The pistons would even wear and get damaged and fall to pieces. You know, the tops would come off them. Rings would wear. Valves wear. Heads wear. Camshafts wear. Everything wears and, you know, something gives. These engines, from that perspective... Are bulletproof they're awesome mate they seem to just not wear they just keep going but what happens is they crack the piston right they've made these engines so strong and so good quality but something's still got to give you just keep giving it more and more and we're not without a chip or a churn and with good injectors everything's running right we're not giving it more and more but you put it under enough load for long enough over time you know things get fatigued something's got to give and the piston cracking over the gudgeon is exactly what happened. So, you know what, I will get the light. Give me a sec. You know, let's get in there and have a look at that cracked piston while we're at it. We may as well. Um, look, you should have seen it in the other videos. If you haven't seen my other videos, really important to subscribe and have your notifications on so you don't miss out on the this important, these important things as they come in, as they happen. The videos happen in blocks, as I keep saying. I can't keep, you know, um, I can't give you 25 years of experience and knowledge and things that happen all day, every day and things we hear about in a few videos, but 
I'll do the best I can to give you the most important things to get you educated, to help avoid these things. That's what we're about, trying to help you with this problem. Okay, so that's number one piston. That's where they crack, happens to be straight over the gudgeon pin. That's the pin, if we had an engine here in pieces, you know, we might pull this down, we might do a video pulling this engine down and, and show you the bits and pieces, but look, someone else can do that. You can hit up Google. But right where the pin that goes through the top of the connecting rod, so the con rod or connecting rod is what connects the crankshaft, the bit down the bottom that turns, I'll show you from the front. So crankshaft, that's your little shaft at the front, right? And then it obviously similar goes out the other end, right? So it doesn't matter each end, doesn't matter. We can look there, yeah, whatever, there it is, right? That's the back end. That's what turns, that's what makes things happen. It gets the party happening. But this is what makes it turn, right? So little explosions in these little cylinders, something's got to give. And you can tell by that combustion, something's not right. These don't just happen for no reason, right? It's caused by wrong combustion it's well documented by Toyota we said that already so let's not go there again you know pretty messy it's, a, it's not a good look right this one at the front it's clean because of the oil blowing through the hole etc and, and the excess fuel that's not getting burnt because there's no compression so it's not burning so the fuel's washing the top of the piston off okay so that's why that one's a bit cleaner I hope you get the picture what I'm trying to say with this it's just a little four cylinder engine and there is other brands with four cylinders or five cylinders having similar issues. You could say a lot worse in some circumstances. And there's some that don't get a mention. You just got to remember though, Toyota is probably one of the biggest brands. So if something's going to happen, you're going to hear about some with them as well. There's other brands that don't get a mention, but don't think they're bulletproof because you haven't got someone out there, I suppose like me, explaining to you, showing you what the problems are, like what we're doing right here. Okay, where's your, I don't know, Let's put it out there. No, let's not. The, the whatever engine expert, where are they, you know? So there's, there's different people on different things, but I don't know that there's people. I haven't heard of them anyway. So, hey, if there is, let me know. All right, guys, hope you get the picture. Small four-cylinder engine. So it doesn't matter whether it's a 1KZ or 1KD, whatever. You push it hard enough, something's going to give. In the 1KZs, they crack heads, right? So that's what happens there. You can get lucky. You can also upgrade cooling systems, you know, and things to avoid it, or you can just take it easy and be a bit careful with it, right? But I'd suggest if you are doing a massive amount of towing and working it hard, that's what's gonna give on that engine. But it's not making as much power, so it's not gonna, of course, more power, more torque, means more force on the piston, bigger bang, more force, right there. Force on the piston. That's why it splits, okay? Um, have a bigger engine, spread the load, you're going to get less wear, okay? Alright guys, hope that's helped. See ya.